This video will discuss the heat capacity in thermodynamics, specifically as it relates to ideal gases. So the heat capacity of a substance we could define as the energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by one Kelvin. So CV, the constant volume heat capacity, that is an extensive path function, and CV bar, the constant volume molar heat capacity, is the constant volume heat capacity divided by the number of moles, and that is an intensive path function. So CV depends on the number of moles of our gas or whatever system we have, CV bar does not. Extensive depends on the number of uh, particles, intensive does not. Okay, so let's say we have some volume change during some process, so delta V equals V final minus V initial. Let's say that that volume change is zero. So then the work done during whatever process during which this volume change occurred is equal to negative integral from V initial to V final of the external pressure integrated with respect to volume. So no dV, V final equals V initial, the work is zero, so no work. All right, so if we're not doing work during a process, then the change in internal energy, delta U, equals work plus heat, so at constant volume, WV, the work at constant volume is zero. So at constant volume, the internal energy change is just the heat. So we have our constant volume heat capacity, CV, as a function of T. That's equal to the partial derivative of the internal energy with respect to temperature at a constant volume, which is approximately equal to delta U over delta T provided that this is over a sufficiently small range in temperature. So if T final minus T initial is a few Kelvin or a few tens of Kelvin, this may be a reasonable approximation to make, but if it's over hundreds of Kelvin, it's probably a bad approximation. So if CV is approximately delta U over delta T, then we saw that delta U is the constant volume heat, so then the constant volume heat capacity is approximately the heat divided by the temperature of the system. Okay, so if we have the change in pressure during a process is zero, so if the final minus the initial pressure is zero, then the constant pressure work, our external pressure is independent of volume, so we can bring it outside this integral. Then the work is negative P external integral V final, V initial to V final of dV. So this V being a state function, this just becomes minus P dV, or sorry, minus P delta V. Then we have our delta U change in internal energy equals the constant pressure work plus the constant pressure heat. So the constant pressure heat is equal to the change in internal energy plus P times the change in volume, which we saw from previous videos on enthalpy is equal to the change in enthalpy. So we now define the constant pressure heat capacity, which is the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. So note here, for CV, with constant volume, we have internal energy. For CP, that's constant pressure, and we have enthalpy. So again, similar kind of trick. If it's over a small temperature range, then this is approximately delta H divided by delta T, change in enthalpy over change in temperature, which is approximately the uh, constant pressure heat divided by the change in temperature. I believe I need a delta T up there as well. Let's put that in there. Okay, so moving on to the ideal gas. For an ideal gas, we have enthalpy is defined in general as U plus PV. So for an ideal gas, PV equals NRT. So the enthalpy of an ideal gas is U plus NRT. We also know that for an ideal gas, the internal energy is a function of the temperature and the number of particles. So the internal energy is directly proportional to the temperature of the system. So if we have a closed system, in a closed system, the number of particles doesn't change. So dN equals zero. So in a closed system, the the infinitesimal or very small change in our internal energy during some small process is the partial derivative of the internal energy with respect to temperature times the infinitesimal change in temperature. 
or du equals cv of t times dt. For the constant pressure heat capacity, that is the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature, which is equal to the partial derivative with respect to temperature for an ideal gas is u plus nrt. So that gives us cp of t for an ideal gas is du dt plus nr, and the ddt of nrt being nr. So for an ideal gas, the constant pressure heat capacity is equal to the constant volume heat capacity plus the number of moles times the gas constant. But again, we can bring in the concept of the molar heat capacity, making that an intensive function. So we divide by the uh, number of moles of gas to get that. So Cp bar equals Cp over N, Cv bar equals Cv over N. So we divide everything by N and we get the, co the constant pressure molar heat capacity of an ideal gas as a function of temperature equals the constant volume molar heat capacity, should have a bar there as well, plus the gas constant. So the difference between the constant pressure and the constant volume molar heat capacity for an ideal gas is equal to the gas constant. So we'll remind ourselves that for an ideal gas, um, the constant volume heat capacity over R is equal to three halves if you are monatomic, five halves if you are diatomic or linear, and six halves if you are a nonlinear polyatomic molecule or three. So the constant volume heat capacities for ideal gases are three halves R, five halves R, and three R. So the constant pressure heat capacities are this plus one. So it'll be uh, five halves R, seven halves R, and eight R for the constant pressure heat capacities of ideal gases.